In recent weeks, we introduced a new segment to the channel, which was testing the tips. And that was me as an average golfer testing out some of the most popular tips on golf YouTube to see if they could help me in my game and whether or not they were any good for fellow average golfers to try. And that big question still remains, are these tips good for your game or are they actually detrimental? So we've come out on the golf course here at Carden Park and I will very shortly show you some of my favorite tips that I've learned. But I think one thing that I wanna stress and probably any PGA professional that even does these YouTube videos would stress is that these do not replace lessons. And if you want the best sort of tuition to uh, look at your individual requirements, then you should always go to your PGA professional. But in saying that, I have found that these tips can be very, very useful in helping you out with certain situations and maybe just helping you to understand the fundamentals of the golf swing. And there's certain things that I have learned in recent weeks watching videos from Danny Maud, Steve Johnston, Matt Fryer, Mr. Short Game and Ali Taylor are pretty much where I've taken all my leads from. Watched a number of videos and if you've watched the series of late, I found some interesting tips that have helped me understand the fundamentals of my swing and certainly helped me improve a bit. So I think it's time to get out on the golf course and I'll tell you a couple of my favorites that I think can help pretty much every golfer. Right, so the first lesson, I think it was pretty much the first video I did that really caught my attention was uh, understanding low points uh, in your swing. And I think that's something that if I'm being perfectly honest, I didn't quite understand what exactly that was, but it is, I suppose, self-explanatory, but I'll do my best to explain it. At the lowest point right now where my arms are fully extended and the uh, club touching the ground, that would be the lowest point of my swing. And uh, what we need to understand is where that low point is and how it affects your ball striking in terms of irons, fairway woods and drivers, because the key is it differs. If you watch most of the best players in the world, when they're striking irons, they'll hit ball first and then they generally take a fairly large divot. And that's because their low point is very much after the, uh, the, the point of impact. Whereas for me, when we started recording my data on Trackman, we found that my low point was often behind the ball and therefore you're hitting very much on the upswing and in my head, maybe getting the ball out the bottom grooves a little bit and not the purest of strikes. So we needed a drill and that drill was to place a coin behind the ball. And the idea was to start it sort of four inches or so behind the ball, take, assume your normal position. And the idea was, was to make sure that you don't hit that coin. And believe me, even at two or three, four inches behind the ball, it made, uh, it was challenging. And from the, uh, from the first times that I did it, we were striking the coin, it was flipping up into the air. But what it soon did, it made me first of all, shift my weight a little bit more to the left. It made sure that I really went into the ball in terms of uh, that transferring of weight, if you like. And very soon, my low point changed from being behind the ball to an inch or so after the ball. So the drill itself really worked, but the, the, the important bit for you is what did it do in terms of uh, results? And what it meant was a much purer, crisper strike. The noise of the strike was better. The ball flight was different. It was a more penetrating ball flight, but it was a great tip. And the tip is as simple as that. Place the coin behind the ball, gradually move it just a little bit further forward as you get a little bit better at that drill. Obviously, you can't do that when you're out on the fairways. You've got to get some visual in your head, put a mark in behind the ball and do exactly the same thing. We'll try one shot here. On this um, par four approach shot at Carden Park and we'll see if we can, um, well, put our money where our mouth is. Well, I've leaked the ball out to the right, but the strike was clean. Not the best of results, but the point being, and I think even if we come down closer, maybe we've got it on the other camera there, you'll see that divot taken, small divot at least, but we're certainly after the ball in terms of low point. But again, I go back to the intro. It doesn't give you the perfect shot, but it does help me understand the fundamentals of the game, and that's key. Now, one of the next videos which I find highly useful was from Mr. Short Game, and uh, obviously it was about short game, and it was about chipping, and it was about understanding a very simplistic way of using the bounce of the sole to help you get that ball sort of popped up and airborne. And I think 
point to remember in this, and I'll reference it at the end, is that uh, it does exactly that. This is about getting the ball up and high. So it's a very much a one dimensional shot. And I must admit, I felt guilty or fell into the trap rather of sort of wanting to execute this shot all the time once I'd mastered it. But in essence, it was about sort of using the bounce of the sole, concentrating again on the area just behind the ball, opening the club face up a little bit and really sort of hitting, using the bounce to hit the ground underneath. We've got a little bit of wet ground there, so that's not quite bouncing as such. But the, the essence again was this same thing about the low point, but understanding that even though you were setting up to the ball with the sort of blade of the club, leading edge of the club rather, almost halfway up the ball, you had to have trust in that bounce and it would do exactly as intended, which is like I said, pop that ball up high. I'll link all the uh, descriptions to these videos uh, in the footage below because, uh, in the information below rather, because you'll need to see the full detail of how this exactly works. But essentially, like I said, lay that club face open a little bit, blade of the club or leading edge of the club, literally pointing to halfway to the ball. We've got a nightmare situation we decided to give ourselves here. I've just said to Hannah, but we'll give it a go. Get up, get up. <laughs> well, it got up and it did what it was supposed to do. We didn't quite give it enough. It's, um, we've got a 58 degree wedge there. And like I said, just using that bounce of the sole, letting it slide underneath, baffled me as to why we didn't thin it. Like I said, with that address position being right in touch with the kind of uh, the leading edge of the club, but it doesn't, trust me, it works. You've got to have a lot of commitment. Swing, hit behind the ball, if you like. Let that bounce do its work. And like I said, it pops the ball up high. But as I said just a little minute earlier, it's not for every situation. And it can get one of those ones because we like to see that high floaty one. We go to it all the time and that's something you must not do. Right, so after sharpening up our short game, thanks to Mr. Short Game, we moved on to a video from Matt Taylor. And this again was about this low point situation that we've seen in the irons, but this time the video was about never top a fairway wood again. And that sounded good to me because it's, although it's not something I suffer from, one thing I can do quite often is get it off the bottom grooves a little bit, sometimes a little bit low. So this tip was interesting. And again, like I said, it was about concentrating on that low point and how you change that low point for fairway woods. Now, I would have thought with a fairway wood, you'd always hit it with a kind of upward blow. So that would be low point behind the ball. But in fact, it wasn't. It was again, well, this is very much taking it from a fairway lie, not off the tee, I should stress. You put a tee in the ground, which is maybe, I don't know what that is, a couple of inches in front of the ball onto the target line. And the idea with this is you concentrate on trying to hit that tee peg. Now, once again, we can't do that in the real game, so you have to uh, visualize something. But the idea, again, simple as we did with the eyes, it was transferring that low point so that it became after the ball. You think, again, you're going to take a divot, you think, but again, the base of the sole just slides along the ground, so it's not something that actually happens. But like I said, it significantly changes or did change ball flight when we got this one right. And it was a really nice shot to watch. So we'll give that one a bit of a, a bit of a go and see if we can execute it better than we did the first iron shot on the video. Absolutely rip that. Maybe make the green and we're a long way out as well. Well, that's just crept on front edge and it actually did take a little bit of a divot and we've got a camera right against the ball there, which should be able to see that we shifted that tee peg and done exactly what was expected. So the idea is simple. It just, again, it keeps you a little bit more centered in terms of not swaying, which is again, sort of eradicates that issue with the swing and make sure you're attacking that uh, ball at impact again, which gets you off that back foot onto the front foot. So it kind of does a number of different things, but in essence, like I said, what it did for me, it got a much stronger ball flight, much better sound. It just feels like it fires out there. It was one of the most enjoyable tips that I've taken onto the course. It's been working really well for me. Right, so following on from that understanding of the low point, which is really one of the key factors in, in my understanding the sort of swing process just a little bit better. And whereas I said earlier in the video, it's more about fundamentals and actually specifics to your swing. The next bit for me was driver. And the driver is a different position in terms of its low point where you want it to be. You want to be hitting the ball 
very much on the upswing and I understood that but it was kind of a drill that was looking at how you then move your uh, low point to after the ball when we were looking at those sort of fairway woods and irons to behind the ball with driver and the first thing was really about the kind of uh, setup so again just a little bit of a um, head behind the ball uh, at, at a slight angle of the, a tilt in the spine rather we sort of all know the ball position in terms of just inside that left foot and the sort of weight distribution just slightly changed but the big thing for me was where that low point was being. It was a drill that was concentrating on the low point being sort of four inches behind the ball. We used some masking tape that we stripped behind the ball and that was our sort of visual that we looked for. So it was practice swings with kind of our visual low point being sort of around this area here, which is again where I'm just trying to hit the ground a little bit. So again, making sure that we're then rising up and hitting that ball on the on very much the upswing so it was the same then when you got to address even though obviously addressing the ball here the concentration was maybe four inches behind the ball I'm actually facing the wrong way on the tee so what I'll do now we've got some bad light right now I'll turn around and we'll attempt to hit a ball we've got a camera behind me and I'll try and execute what I'm talking about That was a pretty decent ball to be fair, a fairly high ball flight and that was the other thing actually that I uh, just reverting back to the original video that we did. The one thing that was noticeable was the ball flight changed significantly. It also you know, helped in launch and uh, I think with driver again that can be a significant issue for a number of us average golfers. So once again a tip that wasn't specific to my swing but just made me understand the basic fundamentals of low points and how that impacts from irons into fairway woods and then into driver are a whole lot different. So the question was, do YouTube golf tips actually work? And I think for me that taken in the right context, yes, they absolutely do. Even if you just look at the small uh, examples that we've taken here today, then for me, absolutely they do. Uh, and they've certainly helped my game, no doubt about it, but understanding fundamentals of the game is the way I would describe it. Not necessarily about, you know, I've still got a very flat, backswing has still come over the top got a bit of a, a loop at the top of the uh, the downswing all them things are incorrect in terms of my own personal swing and is youtube videos going to help that no they're not i think a perfect example of that was the first shot we hit with the iron tip still managed to leak one out to the right hand side so these aren't perfect fixes they're not miracle workers they're not going to cure any great problem with your swing but like I said, for me, they help you understand. If you take, if you've got the, the knowledge or the understanding to take little bits that you can adapt into your own game, then I think they can really be good and helpful and useful. Right, that's me done. Finished again another video here at, uh, on the Cheshire course at Carden Park. Another gorgeous day. And uh, thank you for watching. My request would be in the comments that, as I've said with all the tip videos, if you've had some success with tips, then please put them in the comments down below because what it does, like I said, I've given a few examples of where I've been helped out, but it gives your fellow viewer, uh, fellow golfer, a little bit of a heads up and points them in the direction of perhaps where they can find some other tips that might be useful to them as well. So comments down below, hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. And if you don't subscribe already and like this type of content from an average golfer, then please consider doing so. Right, I'm off and I'll see you all soon.